Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue with more requests of Imperial Guard regiments as we get into the Tanith first and only. If you guys have more requests, please comment down below and let us know what type of uh, Imperial Guard regiment you guys would like us to create a video for. Don't forget to put suggestion followed by whatever Imperial Guard regiment or whatever topic of Warhammer 40k you guys would like us to create a, a 40 facts video for. Uh, and of course, this is a story or this this regiment um, comes from the stories within the Gaunt's Ghost books. Uh, if you guys have not checked, the, checked out those books, I would suggest you do that before you you even watch this video because this video is probably going to spoil some key points within those books. Uh, they're really good books and everybody keeps recommending them. So please check that out. Uh, spoiler warning before you even listen to this. If you if you have the intention to read these books and you hate things getting spoiled, don't watch this. Uh, but anyways, let's get into 40 facts about the Tanith first and only. The Imperial Guard Regiment, known as the Tanith First and Only, officially called the Tanith First Regiment, but better known as Gaunt's Ghosts, is a regiment that was raised from the world of Tanith in the Sabbat World Sector. The regiment has been heavily engaged in combat to retake the Sabbat Worlds from the forces of chaos during the Sabbat Worlds Crusade. Originally, there was three Tanith Regiments raised from the Imperial Guard, the Tanith First, Second, and Third. 6,000 men and a small number of vehicles and artillery pieces. When Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt was sent to Tanith to oversee the founding of these regiments, he was not impressed by the appearance of the men, initially describing them as a scrawny, scruffy mob of soft-voiced woodsmen. His opinion of them changed quickly after seeing them in combat. He impatiently ordered the regiment to begin boarding the troop carriers that would take them to the troop starships awaiting to ferry them to their first war zone. A very lucky move which gets enough men off the world before a chaos war fleet strikes Tanith the same night. He confirms after leaving Tanith that this act salvaged three and a half thousand men of the original three regiments and the majority of their equipment. It was unclear which regiments were actually saved from the fires of Tanith but the remaining men are formed into the Tanith 1st Regiment, which is soon named the Tanith 1st and Only. On the regiment's first battlefield on the world of Blackshard, Helene Larkins coins the nickname Gaunt's Ghosts. The term Ghosts has two meanings. The first is that Corbic tells Gaunt that his decision to abandon Tanith made ghosts of them, hollow echoes. The second is that because of their exceptional stealth and scouting skills, they are ghost-like on the battlefield. The ghosts eventually garner a strong reputation after a number of actions during the Sabbat World's Crusade, in particular, the defense of Vervrun Hive. Unfortunately, this success did not come without its drawbacks, and the ghosts suffer heavy casualties on a number of occasions. However, two large personnel intakes during the regiment's history one from the citizenry of Vervrun Hive, the other from the combination with the 81st Belladon Recon Regiment, managed to offset these losses. The Tanith First and Only are best known for their participation in the Imperium Sabbat World's Crusade against the forces of chaos in the Sabbat World Sector. During the Crusade, the Ghost's expertise in covert operations was instrumental in the liberation of a number of worlds. However, rivalries with other more illustrious regiments often put the ghosts at risk. The regiment took heavy losses in their early actions, including the loss of 300 guardsmen during the friendly fire incident at Voltis Watergate. Heavy casualties were also incurred during the effort to recapture the Mechanicum Forge world of Fortis Binary. So much so that by the time the ghosts deployed on Monthax, they numbered only about 1,500 guardsmen. After Tanith was destroyed by the attack of the Chaos Warfleet, the Tanith first and only had no homeworld from which to draw new recruits to replace losses. Instead, new ghosts were adopted into the regiment as the crusade progressed. At the end of the siege of Vervan Hive, the megacity was left in ruin and disillusioned citizens of the Verhast were given the opportunity to join the Imperial Guard under the Act of Consolation. This resulted in an influx of soldiers from this planet into the Tanith First, which brought females into the regiment. Several of these women became some of the regiment's best snipers. While Colonel Gaunt is on Garion, 
and the Tanith First is left without a senior commander. The regiment is merged with the Belladon Covert unit called the 81st Belladon Regiment and becomes the 81st First Recon. Following Colonel Wilder's death and the Gaunt's return to command, the regiment resumes the name of the Tanith First and Only. It is worth noting that following the merger with the 81st Belladon, the Tanith First organizational structure changed. Companies used alphabetic calling signs to replace the previous numerical platoons. There eventually were three cultural divisions within the regiment, the Tanith, the Vargazzi, and the Belladon, led by Major Ron, Colia, and Baskerville, respectively. Each was a native to the world of the part of the regiment he commanded. The troops of the Tanith First are unparalleled scouts, marksmen, masters of stealth tactics, and excellent light infantry and are said to possess an unerring sense of direction. Traits developed for survival on the planet where the forest actually moved to conceal the path taken. The Tanith uniform is black with optional helmets for standard troops and forage caps for the regiment's elite scout platoon. The Tanith uniform is black with optional helmets for the standard troopers and a forage cap for the regiment's elite scout platoon. Camouflage cloaks made out of special synthetic material called camuline are standard issue. The cloaks change their color depending on the location of the wearer. Every soldier has a long, double-edged bayonet combat blade that the Tanith call the straight silver. Her favored special weapons include the long last sniper rifle, flamethrowers, and portable missile launchers that the Tanith nickname Treadfeathers. The cap badge of the Tanith is a wreath surrounded skull with three daggers behind it, each dagger representing one of the original Tanith regiments. On the badge is the inscription for Tanith for the Emperor. After the destruction of the Tanith's second and third regiments, the Tanith snapped off the two outside daggers on their cap badge. The Versgazzi cap badge is an axe rake to symbolize their former hive's mining and industrial background. These pins and other badges that indicate rank or specialization are dulled down with soot or boot black to aid in stealth operations. The native-born Tanith can be generally identified by their pale skin, which contrasts with their dark hair and blue tattoos. Virtually every Tanith possesses a visible tattoo, although the number, design, size, and complexity varies widely between the individuals. The soldiers come from a wide variety of backgrounds, as one would expect from a regiment drawn from the entirety of the frontier world. They share exceptional abilities at stealth, as a standard ghost matches or exceeds a scout specialist from any other regiment. Almost every Tanith boasts an impressive innate sense of direction, as the moving forest of their world made navigation via landmarks useless. If all practical observation is to be trusted, a native-born Tanith can never be lost. Of course, the most powerful unifying force lies in the loss of their homeworld. Every Tanith experienced the incomparable memory of seeing their home and everyone they knew utterly annihilated by chaos. Unlike most other guardsmen, a Tanith cannot even dream of returning home someday, and must fight knowing that when he dies, so too die some of the last memories of Tanith. Despite the potential for despair at the loss of their home, this event proves more of a catalyst than a death sentence. The Tanith hold an absolute conviction to make the most of their lives and carry a burning desire for vengeance against chaos that allows them to take a seemingly suicidal mission with hardly a second thought. Despite all the tragedy that always lies near a Tanith's thoughts, they maintain a surprisingly happy attitude when not in combat. The Ghosts also boast an incredibly clean record compared to most Imperial Guard regiments, and rarely merit serious disciplinary action. Although the usual collection of low-grade misconduct and misdemeanors can be found, its officers rarely need to enforce corporal or lethal punishment. Because of their peculiarities, some other Imperial Guard regiments wrongly view the Tanith as primitive, unruly barbarians rather than the highly skilled specialized operation units they truly are. Like the members of the first and only who hail from Tanith, the Verskotsti element of the ghosts come from a much more mixed stock and have few universal features, although many have adopted the traditional Tanith tattoos. Like the Tanith, they also share a burning hatred for chaos, although their world is rebuilding. They too bear the scars from seeing their home burn. Overall, the Verskotsti element 
have adopted tenets as practice and customs well. And although these warriors are less skilled at stealth work than the original Tanith, they bring many skilled sharpshooters to the regiment. Unlike the other two elements of the ghosts, the Belladon are not united by a shared loss of their home. They also claim a long and proud martial history, unlike the first generation Tanith and Vergatstite troops. Though they are an integral part of the Tanith first and only, the Belladon maintain a strong regimental identity and put large emphasis on their previous commander, Colonel Wilder, who briefly commanded the combined regiments in its early days and gave his life to save it. The Belladon boast their own excellent scouts and have exchanged techniques and practices that complement those of the native Tanith. The campaign of Hagia, the sacred homeworld of Saint Sabbath herself, was one of the more notable engagements Gaunt's ghosts took part in. Gaunt's ghosts nearly found themselves disbanded after a trap sprung by the forces of chaos resulted in the destruction of the planet Doctrinopolis, signaling a massive chaotic retaliation war fleet to move in on the world in the progress. Assigned to retrieve the sacred remains of the saint from her mountain tomb, the regiment was able to both fend off a massive assault of the Infardi Chaos Cultists of Patterson and activate the powerful psychic device in the saint's tomb, which shattered the incoming Chaos Warfleet through the warp and ultimately saved the planet from invasion and conquest by the servants of the ruinous powers. On the world of Fantine, a number of Gaunt's ghosts took part in Operation Lyrissal, an airborne operation that deployed specialized selected fire teams into the city of Orenburg to seek out and assassinate Sagitar Slaith, the Chaos Warlord in command of the Blood Pack forces holding the city. This mission took place at the same time as a main Imperial assault on the world in which the rest of the Tanith First was deployed. Another notable campaign was when deployed as part of the Brigade Strength Force to the planet Axel Cardinal. The ghost quickly became embroiled in a brutal trench warfare that had defined the local defense. This was also the first conflict which the ghosts did not help end decisively. While they made some gains against the chaos corrupted Satic Republic, they were ordered to take ship for Herador even as the war on Axe continued to rage on. The Gaunt's ghost also participated in Herador when the recently resurrected Saint Sabbath asked the first and only to serve as her bodyguards. The ghosts found themselves embroiled in a brutal city fight against a massive chaotic host attempting to kill her, and thus shattered the morale of the Imperial Crusade in the Sabbat worlds. Ultimately the regiment was victorious, fending off both the armies of the Blood Pack and the nine assassins serving Chaos to protect the saint, allowing her to kill the Chaos Magister Inokenti. With this victory, the Chaos Ark Urlach Gaur lost one of the greatest lieutenants, and the crusade was able to take the fortress world of Morlon and open up a second front in the crusade against the forces of chaos in the Sabbat worlds. It should be noted that it was on Herador that Colonel Colum Korbak fell, shot and killed by the chaos corrupted Vergansti Lia Ku, who had been a member of the regiment. The Tanith 1st Regiment was deployed to Ancreon Sextus, a part of the Belladon 81st Reconnaissance Regiment, while Gaunt's team was pursuing its own mission on Geryon. The key battle zones on the world were a series of massive steppe cities, which were in reality gateway links to the Realm of Chaos. Upon discovering the true nature of the steppe cities as a result of the efforts of Gaunt and his Geryon 12, the Imperial forces abandoned their bloody siege work and destroyed them using orbital bombardment which annihilated significant numbers of the enemy and evaded the trap set for the Imperials by the forces of chaos. While on shore leave on Balhut, elements of the 1st Tanith Regiment fought off a blood pack death squad that had been sent to assassinate Mabon Etagor, a former blood pack officer who had defected to the Imperial side in the Sabbat World's Crusade before he could reveal any useful intelligence to the Imperial military. 
And those were 40 facts about the Gaunt's Ghosts, the Tanith first and only. Thank you guys so much for sending that request our way. If you guys have more requests for more Imperial Guard regiments, don't forget to comment down below. Put suggestion followed by whatever regiment you guys would like us to create a video for. Same goes with any other topic of Warhammer 40k. If you guys want us to go back and redo any videos, we'll also do that. Don't forget to put suggestion followed by the topic. And of course, guys, don't forget to check out the Gaunt's Ghost books. Uh, you guys can continue to tell us that they're really good books and we should check them out and we will uh they're by dan abnett uh so go on google go go to your local gw pick up some of these books uh everybody says that they're awesome and i'm sorry that i guess <laughs> a lot of stuff was spoiled in this video um but again this video does not do the books justice so go out there buy the books um get involved in the awesomeness that is the lore of the tanith first and only uh, and again, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing by you guys liking the video. You're telling YouTube that you guys want more Warhammer 40k content every single day. And you encourage us to keep putting out awesome videos for you guys. We really want to get into the experimental uh, side of things. That's why we're doing um, creepypastas and we're going to start doing terrain tutorials and all this good stuff. If you guys want to support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. And uh, a simple dollar a month is going to help us make more videos for you guys. With that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.